Hello everyone and welcome. Today I'm going to talk about another PS1 emulator called Duck Station. If you're into emulation then you've most likely already heard of it. Besides Beetle PSX, it's another one of the best options to play a PS1 on. Follow along, because this is going to be one of the simplest and best guides ever for Duck Station. I wanted to make a short guide to show people how to use this fantastic emulator and its features. Also to spread awareness about it, because there are still people who suggest old and outdated emulators. So many people still recommend EPSXE, but the truth is you should never use it again. It doesn't have many of the common game fixes or features that modern emulators like Duck Station or Beetle PSX has. If you run into a bug or something in your game isn't showing right, then nobody will be able to help you no matter how much you ask around online. It's most likely a problem with the emulator that will never be fixed. I can't stress that enough, never use EPSXE or any similar outdated emulators ever again. EPSXE does have a special place in my heart, and many others probably. It is a classic, but it's just not good enough anymore. So now that I've said that bit, onto the tutorial for Duck Station. We're going to start off by going to the Duck Station's GitHub page, and then to the latest development build. This is specifically a tutorial for Windows, but there's also a mobile app that you can use on Android. Also, on the main page, all of the documentation is conveniently organized in one place. Check the top of the page for the directory. Okay, since we're on Windows, download the Duck Station Windows X64 release. Hit save, then go to your file explorer. Alright, the download is finished. Next, I'm going to make my Duck Station folder in Documents. You can really put your installation anywhere you want, but I like to put it here. So create the folder, and let's name it Duck Station. I'm going to move the Duck Station download here, and extract the zipped file. There's two different GUIs you can use as well. I prefer the cleaner no GUI look, but some people may prefer the QT version since the menu is more available and you can change options faster. So start either of those up and then close it out. I only started it up so it would create these folders for us. And next we have to import the BIOS files. As usual, I cannot provide the BIOS files here since it's still technically piracy so you'll have to make a quick Google search or rip your own files. Once you have your BIOS files, we're going to go to the BIOS folder, which by default is in your documents folder, then to Duck Station, and then BIOS. Of course, each BIOS file is region specific. Check my list here and see what you will need. I just like to have them all because I play a lot of international versions of games as well, so it doesn't hurt to add them. Move them in here and we're done. As far as installation goes, we're finished. I'm going to be setting up the emulator on the Node GUI version since it's my favorite. It's simplistic and you can easily access all of the options. So next we need to map our controller buttons. My controller of choice is a PS4 controller. PS5 works as well and PS3 can also be used too. So if you want to use a PS3 controller then read the documentation about its compatibility on the GitHub page. First make sure your controller is connected to your PC through Bluetooth or USB. And we're going to go to settings, then the controller icon. And we're going to go through here and select each button with the mouse, then press the corresponding button on your controller. Also, since this is a DualShock controller, change that first, then map all of the buttons. And that's everything, the controller mapping is finished. The only thing you need now is a PS1 ROM. I myself just stick to the Q and bin files. So hit start file and make your way to your ROMs directory. And when you get there, load the Q file. Mine's located on the desktop, so I'll make my way there and load. And everything is done. Now you can play all of your favorite PS1 classics. If all you care about is native resolution, high accuracy, and being able to play a game, then of course I've shown you everything you need now. I highly recommend going through the next steps of this guide, and checking out more of Duck Station's best features though. Next I'll show you how to load your games list for easier access, how to use the graphics enhancements, and a few more very useful features the emulator offers. Something that's also very useful to do is to keep all of your ROMs in one directory and then scan it so you can quickly access them all. So go to settings again, 
then the game list settings in the second tab, then make your way to your ROMs directory and select it. Now you can just hit open game list at the menu to play everything that you have. So now onto more of the features that DuckStation has to offer. There's a lot of excellent upscaling tools you can use, and it'll make your games look better than they ever have before. It's a truly amazing difference. One last thing I should say before you use any hacks. They can definitely cause some graphical glitches, and your best option is to just play around with them and find out what works best. One of the most common problems comes from using texture filtering, along with upscaling the resolution. I've actually found that DuckStation does have less glitches like this than Beetle PSX has. The no edge blending did the trick to fix most problems that I've had in the past, so take note of that if you plan on using texture filtering. Alright, so let's go back to the settings menus, then click on the enhancements icon where all of the upscaling options are located. First, change the internal resolution scale. Since I'm on a 1080p display, I'll benefit best from 5x upscaling. Next, texture filtering. I myself like to use XBR most of all, and I'm going to use the no edge blending option to avoid some graphical glitches that it would usually cause. You can also try out the other filters to see what looks best to you. True color rendering, enable that. You'll see much better color blending with that one. The widescreen hack, you can try it out, but for some games it might not work too well. They were designed to only show what you're supposed to see in its original aspect ratio, so in some games you'll see missing objects, tiles, and such. You can try out disabling interlacing if you want, it'll render in progressive mode instead. It's compatible with most games, but again it might not work well with some others. Then PGXP options. Geometry, texture, calling corrections, and preserve project precision are all great, so turn these on. You'll notice the textures in the games are aligned straight and neatly. Besides the internal resolution upscaling, it's one of the best enhancements. The depth buffer I wouldn't use. It's caused a lot of graphical glitches in the games I've played, including the one I'm playing right now. Alright, and that's everything. You can play around with the enhancements, but these are some of the best settings to use. So now let's go back to our game and see how much that's changed it. First, let's see a little bit of the before. This is all in native resolution with zero enhancements. Then here's what it looks like with the enhancements I just turned on. And you can see this looks really beautiful. This looks so much better than before. Of course, playing in native resolution does have some nostalgia value, but I think any PS1 fan should definitely try this out. You can always change back if you don't like it. Also, you can enter the game in full screen mode at the main menu or by hitting Alt and Enter at the same time. And anytime while playing, you can hit Escape to access all of the menus. It's pretty convenient. You can access all of the settings mid-game this way. To exit full screen mode, just hit Alt and Enter at the same time again. Okay, so the last important thing that I'll show you is save states. With save states, you can save anywhere in your game and go back to that exact spot with all of the same save data that you had at that point. To save where you are, press F2. Then to load back where you were, press F1. You have multiple slots too, and you can access the save state menu with F3 and F4 to change which slot you were using. So here, let's save state with F2, run into here with low health, and I'm about to get a game over except that I'm not. Hit F1, and I'm back to where I was, and I'm still alive. One thing you should be careful of when creating save states is that you don't ruin an in-game save on your memory card. Say you made a save state, then went on playing like normal and making saves on the memory card, then you do a load state to where you were. Some games don't handle this well and might wipe all of your manual saves. You'd only be left with your save states then, and the game saves you had at that point. The hotkeys for save states also might change when switching controllers, but you can always go back to the mapping menu and set them back to whatever you want. Okay, and that's everything in DuckStation that I have to show you for now. If you have any questions about this setup, or suggestions about something you think I missed, please make a post about it in the comments. There's a lot of other options available in DuckStation, but I showed you everything you need to play games accurately and with great settings for the upscaling hacks. Lastly, you may have recently heard or seen posts about DuckStation being dead, but this is not true. The GitHub page has been archived, but this doesn't mean the emulator is abandoned or incomplete. This is still a 10 out of 10 emulator that will last for ages. In fact, when I was speaking in the Discord, the creator Stenzik said he hasn't made any major changes in over a year. There's only so much you can do with an emulator once you have all of the fixes and enhancements that are possible, so you should believe it's in excellent shape and has perfect or near perfect accuracy. 
All right, and that's everything I have to say for now. If this video helped you, please leave a like and subscribe. Also, let me know if you'd like to see more emulation guides like this. This is Shaztopia. Have a wonderful day.